We shall be talking about patent doctor's arteriosus for the USMLE exam, also known as PDA. In order to be able to understand how PDA actually occurs, let's take a look at normal embryologic uh, cardiovascular system. This is a, how blood vessels actually carry blood into the heart. So blood gets into the right atrium, and this blood comes in from the inferior vena cava and also the superior vena cava. As the blood travels from the right atrium, it goes into the right ventricle. During neonatal period inside utero, babies often have few channel openings. They have a patent foramen ovale, which allow bloods to cross over from the right atrium into the left atrium. And also, they have a PDA, also known as the patent ductus arteriosus. So some of the blood actually travels from the right atrium to the left atrium and also travels down to the right ventricle. From the right ventricle, the blood is pumped through the pulmonary artery and some, some of the blood travels right directly into the aorta through the patent ductus arteriosus. The reason is because there's a lot of high pressure in the lungs when a baby is inside a uterus, right? This is because the lungs are not well developed. So because the lungs are actually shrunk inside the uterus, inside the baby, there's high pressure here. So most of the pressure, there's high resistance cause a higher pressure to allow blood to easily translocate from the pulmonary artery right into the aorta, shunting the blood into the systemic circulation. Because the lung is not really responsible for oxygenating blood in utero, that allows more of the oxygenated blood coming from the right side of the heart, which is a high, higher pressure system, to get blood to the rest of the systemic circulation. And this is fine. This is normal in utero. And some of the blood eventually returns back to the pulmonary veins, to the left atrium, back into the left ventricle, and the blood ends up going into the aorta. As soon as the baby is born, what happens is the lung expands, okay? So the lung gets bigger, which means the resistance inside the pulmonary artery decreases because the amount of resistance inside the lungs has actually lessened. Well, this decreased lung resistance allows the shunt, which normally goes from the right side of the heart to the left side, to return circulation from the left side to the right side of the heart. So one of the most important features once a neonate is born is that the patent ductus arteriosus closes. And when it closes, it actually becomes the ligamentous arteriosum. And also the patent foramen ovale closes, preventing blood from shunting from the right side of the heart into the left side of the heart due to decreased pressure inside the pulmonary vasculature because now blood can easily travel through the pulmonary arteries into the lungs and now the baby takes a nice deep breath. That nice deep breath that they take allow them to be able to oxygenate blood and now the lungs can function as an oxygenating chamber to oxygenate the blood and get it back into the pulmonary veins and from the pulmonary veins into the left atrium and down to the left ventricle and now the baby is getting good oxygen to the rest of the body. So in neonates, once they are born, you have that reversal of the shunt, which becomes now left to right. Now if a baby is born in this ductus arteriosus, which is shown here and enlarged here, does not close, this is what happens, take a look. The blood goes into the left ventricle from the left atrium, and then once the aorta is pumped the blood, remember the aorta is now a very high pressure system on the left side of the body. The blood starts to trickle down into the patent ductus arteriosus, allowing that conduit to let more oxygenated blood go through into the rest of the lungs. Well, we don't want that to be happening, but this is what happens in patients with PDA. Well, unfortunately, this patient, often if this is not corrected, can result in late cyanosis in the lower extremities. Why? Let's take a look. 
if oxygenated blood is going to the other, but half of it is being dumped into the pulmonary artery, right? What happens is less blood gets to the lower extremities, and this can lead to extremities in the lower cyanosis later on in the new in the newborn baby. So, how does this murmur present with? Well, in the board exam, they want you to be able to hear the murmur of patent ductus arteriosus, which is known as a machine-like murmur, and this is what the murmur sounds like. So, as you can see, the murmur sounds exactly like a machine-like murmur, okay? It's like going back and forth inside the machine. Now, the patency of a patent ductus acerosus is often maintained by prostaglandin E and also low oxygen tension. That keeps the PDA open. However, in order to fix this pathology, you, you have to give the patient endomethacin, which ends the patent ductus arteriosus and closes it. Because once you close that channel, now blood can easily translocate and go down from the aorta down to the rest of the systemic circulation. Okay, so in the board exam, prostaglandin E and low oxygen tension keeps that open. But when, which pathology will you want to keep this PDA open? The only disease pathology when you want to keep the PDA open is in patients with translocation of great vessels where they have the aorta and the pulmonary artery that's been transposed on top of each other. And you need that blood to be able to be translocated from the patent ductus arteriosus to get some oxygenated blood to the rest of the tissues. But the treatment is endomethacin endomethacin so very very important so the reason why i wrote endomethacin here is because if you call it as endomethacin it allows you to remember that yeah that's what uh closes and keeps the pda closed okay so that is very very important that you know that for the board exam another congenital cardiac association they want you to know about pda is that this is often found is associated with patient with congenital rubella so if they want to test you on what if a patient has rubella they have blueberry morphine rash on their skin and they ask you what kind of cardiac defect you most likely gonna see in this patient the answer is pda patent doctor's arteriosus okay so that brings us to the end of our lecture on pda Hey, thank you so much for watching the video. I hope you learned a lot. Are you studying for the USMLE Step 1 or Step 2? Are you studying for the NCLEX or you're currently in nursing school as a nursing student? Are you a PA student currently in school or studying for your PANS exam? Or are you a nurse practitioner student or trying to take your MP board exam? Listen, I've got super awesome content for you. If you truly love this video and it simplified your learning process, I want you to check out my website below. I've listed all the list of exams, whether you're studying for any of this board exam, and all I want you to do is click on the link right now below so that you can take you directly to my website. For USMLE, just go to smashusmle.com. For NCLEX, go to crushnclex.com. And if you're studying for the PANS exam, the nurse pr practitioner exam, or you're studying for your internal medicine board exam, just click below and take you directly to ftplectures.com. Listen, I can't wait to help you. If you need to get in touch with me, just get to my website, you're able to reach me directly, and we can work together one-on-one. -on -one. Listen, you are super awesome, and my goal here is to help your dream come true. If you want to be a doctor, want to be a nurse practitioner, a registered nurse, or physician assistant, I'm here to help you get to that next level. With your medical knowledge, let's save the world together. I love you guys. You guys are super awesome. And do not forget to click on the link below to be able to get to my website. Also, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. You guys have a great day. Let's go.